Okay, so what I want to look at now is this plugin for Rhino. It's called Paneling Tools. And what this does is it lets you take a, either a surface or like you can create different types of panelization. So if you had like a surface already set up, you create basically these grids on it. And then it's these grids that you use to form like panels. And these can be either like standard panels that are built into the software, like rectangles and triangles and stuff. Or if you had like your own shape that you wanted to then morph onto this panelization, you can do that too. And so we'll look at both of those today. And then if we have time, we'll go into showing how we could quickly create a grasshopper definition that would do the same thing. And then you could do it that way. And then also, Paneling Tools has little components that appear in Grasshopper once you download it. So everything we do now is going to be like direct modeling. And then later, you can see how, if you wanted to, you could actually use the Paneling Tools within Grasshopper, or you can just create a definition from scratch. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is start off with like a surface. So I'm just going to make a regular surface. And then I want to make this like an interesting shape. So we can do a couple of these. So I'm going to type in rebuild and then just do 8x8 and hit OK. And then I'm going to make a copy of this and move this over. So then I'll type in points on. I just want to see the points. So on this one, I'm going to grab all of these and move them up. And then on this guy, I'll grab like the center like that. So now we have like two different forms. So that one's got like a weird thing over there. Maybe we'll, yeah, that looks good. I think we could get what we need with these. So that's my first step. So I'm going to turn my points off now. You can also click here if you want. You can left click to turn points on or right click to turn points off. Um, so once you have your shape, let's say this is like the roof of your building or like the side of your building that you would want to start paneling. So maybe this one is rotated 90. So it's like a vertical application. Um, the first step is to go up into paneling tools and we need paneling tools works with paneling grids So that's something that you'll Get into like kind of understanding is whenever you're trying to panelize something it actually comes down to the module that you're using to set up that panel and um, One way of doing it is with grids another way is you can subdivide a surface and basically like slice up your surface um, paneling tools works with with uh, grid points and so you can go to the first so you'll kind of work from here down um, you can panel without a grid if you want um, and then there's also like these guys will adjust like the utilities so this controls panels this controls like the grid so if you needed to trim the grid or add more points to the grid you could come here um, and then general will be kind of like more like general kind of overall controls that you can use. Um, the first thing you want to do is start off here. And um, you could, if you just wanted to mess around and start creating like random grids using like the array or um, extruding like from one curve to another, you can do that and just make a bunch of random grids and just make random panels. But here what I want to show you is, let's say we've already got a surface and I need it to become panelized now. So these are like the two situations that I have here. Um, so if I come over here, paneling tools, create paneling grid, and we start with surface domain, and then you say number, this lets you pick a surface. And then the domain is basically, it's asking me, I want you to tell me how many times to subdivide this by a number. So if we click this one, it will say select surfaces to divide by number. So we can click that. And then by default, it's going to make a 10 by 10. 
So if you look at it and you think that's okay, you could just hit enter and then make sure group is set to yes. So all this is creating is just a point, a bunch of points in a grid. So what I want to do now is maybe, see here these are getting kind of spaced out, maybe we do 10 by 15, or maybe that's 10, and this one's 15. And so now I have a, this looks kind of square. You can do this like whatever shape you want. And so let's say you're working with like a material that you know needs to be like 4 by 8 or something like that you would basically keep adding more subdivisions until you can get it into those those dimensions. Um, once you're ready, you hit enter. And so now, if I click out, I have my surface still, and then I have my points. Um, and they're grouped together, so it's just a bunch of random points um, that Panelian Tools has generated for us. Um, so now, I'm going to go back to paneling tools and since I have a grid I'm going to tell it panel from grid and then the first option is panel 2d grid so what this lets you do is it will ask you first for a paneling points grid or multiple ones if you have them so we can click that and hit enter and now it wants a base surface so that needs to know where you want like basically these these the reference of the grid to the panel because you don't need to have them on top of each other they could have like a separation between them and it will honor that distance so we could look at that in a minute um, but the base surface that I wanted to try and match is that and see just by clicking that now it's gone through and started to create panels so at first it looks like perfect panels whatever we can just look up at the top right now and look through these options and make sure that these are all set up the way you want them to be so the first one pattern this is basically the shape of your panels so if you type in box you're gonna get that if you click it and you change that to box X it's kind of like these angled boxes um, where you can see it's it's going along a four grid like basically like four boxes create one X and that's how it's repeating um, you can do like triangles, uh, diamond, and there's a bunch of different ones that you can do. And we can do bricks. Let's start with this one. I'm going to hit enter. And then now I have this. So let's move this over. So there's my first basically panelization. And that was just using. Uh, if we repeat that, and then it's also created a bunch of edges. Probably told it to create those. Um, if I repeat this again, I'm going to go here, hit paneling tools, panel from grid, and I'm going to do the top one, panel 2D grid. So select the grid. Now it wants me to select the paneling points grid, enter when done. Select the base surface that's here, and then it starts creating these. So if you tell it add edges, that's the that group of edges that I had there, so I could tell it no. Paneling shape, it could be straight, or there's like a bunch of other ways you can try and do it, like projected, straight, short shortest path will kind of like cut straight across. Uh, for now, I just want straight panels. Um, and then let's try now like a diamond and then I told it add edges no add faces yes that will create these faces which you'll notice later when we do some of the other ones it doesn't have that option so it's, it's kinda like a little weird sometimes the paneling tools um, but for just a standard 2D we can do that um, from here you could add more stuff if you wanted to mesh or whatever if you want to name it something different and if you want to group them when you do, I would always recommend grouping them because it's going to create a lot of panels all at once. So it's just easier if you group them. Um, so it does make a layer. So if you turn these on and off, you can see that like these things were in different layers. So F is for faces, E is for edges. So it's creating layers for them and you can name that something different if you wanted to. Um, 
So if you're happy with all that, you hit enter. Notice it's made a new set of layers. Um, and then we can click there. Now let's move this over 50. Move it that way. So now we have two different set of sets of panels for the same surface. Does that make sense? And that's just by changing a couple of the settings. Uh, the next thing we could do, let's say I don't want any of these patterns. I wanted something like different. So what you could do, let's grab like this guy and let's make like a hexagon. If I want to tell paneling tools to not make those boxes, I wanted to use my custom shape. If you look, we go to paneling tools paneling from grid we only have one grid so we can only make the two-dimensional panels we can't make a three-dimensional panel yet because we only have one set of grids um, you need two sets of grids in order to do the 3d ones because you need to know the height of the panels um, so I'm gonna go here but I'm gonna not, instead of doing 2d I'm gonna do custom 2d so I click that it's gonna ask me again paneling point grid Enter base surface here and now it wants custom curves and points so once you pick this and hit enter it'll, it'll show you and say is this how you want them to tile and if you want it different you can add offsets you can shift you can like move things so that it either overlaps or it will stagger them across um, if I'm happy with it like that I can hit enter and then now if you notice it's gone through and put them all in there and I group them also. Um, so now I can move that 40 and then that way 50. So that's the custom one. It's not much different than doing a standard 2D one, except you have to give it something to put in there. And then we can also do, let's say we want to do that and then also stars. So we want not just the same panel everywhere, but we want two different panels. So if you go back to paneling tools, you'll notice that the next one is custom 2D and it says variable. So we can tell it to do this, select paneling points grid, you hit enter, base surface would be this guy, and then it wants unit pattern curves and points. So I can tell it this one, will that just enter it? Enter. Okay, hang on. Point grid, that one. So that's put both of them in there. So if you have, so that's kind of cool. It's not what I was trying to do, but um, so let's leave that one for now. Let's go sixty. So now we have those. So all these different types, and you could combine these. So even that could be like kind of diagram or like uh, you can use this to generate a lot of different layers of your, like your facade or something like that so you could use one of these to generate the structural system you could then repeat the command and do it slightly different to create like the panels and then you can do it again to get like the windows inside the panels and there's you could do this multiple times and then create all this geometry that you need with really only like the initial shape defined. Um, the next thing I would do is let's look at applying the same stuff to three-dimensional panels instead of just two-dimensional. So if we go to grid utility I want to do I think it says offset points 
So if you click that, it'll ask you for the distance method. You can say fixed. That means it will use the same distance everywhere on the offset. Or you can put some other so sort of logic in there to do like mean curvature, point attractors, curve attractors, and that will make it either closer in some areas and farther in other areas or where it gets more curvy maybe it gets thicker to try and like strengthen the slab and where it's more flat it could be thinner um, for now I'm just going to do fixed the distance I don't know really how big that is because I just made it randomly but we'll try with one uh, connected I'm going to leave that at no I don't want to connect both grids I just want to offset them and then have two different grids and I want to group them so I'm going to hit enter and then let's see oops I never selected my points so then hit enter now it wants the base surface and once you do that you'll notice it's made a series of points so let's zoom into this and they're just off of that edge by one so one unit so it's one foot so now we can tell Rhino all right, use paneling tools and place a three-dimensional object inside that little panel instead of just a flat 2D object. So if we go up to paneling tools, you do paneling from grid, panel 3D grid, it will want the first points. So it's that one. Then you hit enter. Select second paneling points grid, enter. And then it will go through and place I didn't change my options, so it just gave me everything that was in there. So let's try that. 20. So it looks like we got meshes, solids edges and some sort of surfaces so I'm gonna go back first and change the options before I go to the next one so I'm gonna go paneling with grid 3d grid so here we have add edges I'm gonna tell it no add faces no solids yes and meshes I'm gonna tell it no I don't want to add meshes I just want solids so I want these panels to come out and just be solid um, and then the, the pattern, you can do 3D box, partition, wedge. We could try like pyramid. Um, and so it wants the first paneling grid. You got to hit enter. And then second one, enter. And so it's pretty much done just boxes. But if you notice, these guys are three dimensional. And if we do the same thing to this, so if I go here, paneling, create paneling grid, domain number, and click this guy, and accept that. Uh, maybe let's see. That's fine. And then we go again, paneling, grid utility, offset points, base surface, there. So now if I do that 2D, I mean 3D grid. I'm gonna do the same thing we just did. Choose that. Enter. That's the second one. And now we have this. Oops. So the thickness is driven by how much that offset is set to. Um, let's try doing one now that's different. So paneling 3D, let's change that to wedge. Have to see if this gives us anything different. So these ones are organized a little different, They're like triangular. 
And so depending which of these you need and how your structure is organized underneath, that would dictate kind of like the shape of your panels that you decide to use. So that can have like a big impact on how you start to read and decide which of these options you want to use. The next thing we can look at is, let's say we wanted to change the panel as we went across. We can do um, our own panel. So let's get like a, let's try this like donut. So it's like a ring. We can go paneling tools, panel from grid, panel custom, and it's 3D. So that's kind of how you decide which of these to use. They're all kind of the same but some of them will have um, different options. So if it's always the same panel, you know it's going to be one of the top ones. If you want to define the, the panel, then you would use a custom one. And then if it's flat, use 2D. If it's three-dimensional, use 3D. And if you want to change the panel across, like as you're doing different areas, you would use the variable one. So let's try custom 3D. It says first bounding grid would be that one. Enter. Second bounding grid is this one. Now it wants select two bounding surfaces or enter if there is none. We can just hit enter. Then it wants this. And then it's going to show you how it's going to tile that shape. And then we give it that and we accept. And then it's going to run through it. Hopefully it doesn't crash our computer. It's going to make that many little Oh, and I didn't group them, but they should all be on a layer. So you should be able to select, or maybe not. Oh, no, those are on that layer. So if that happens, you just got to do this. Oops. And now since we have everything else grouped there, we just need to add these guys together group for some reason I think this one either I didn't press I didn't have it selected or it, this is the one that doesn't there is one that doesn't have these turned there again so this guy if we look at it it has all these different shapes but they've been put into that initial form so when you look at it someone might see that and be like man that's amazing like how'd you do that that must take them forever to figure out it's really you're setting up these series of rules and then you're defining them very clearly and telling the software to do it um, the thing that's nice with paneling tools it's very straightforward where it gets annoying is if I need to change any of these I'm basically rerunning that whole process I'm going panel, 2D, or custom, from one grid to the other grid, select point one, select point two, here's my thing, and you put it in. It, it would be a lot easier if we could set up a definition for this so that you could just change the input or move the surface and it would just re-panelize re it. If I change that initial shape, I got to delete these grids, redo them all together, and then re-panel everything. So it gets kind of time consuming when you need to keep doing a lot of options. Um, that's kind of the drawback, but it is really easy to understand and kind of get going with. And once you get your hands like dirty doing this, you'll start to realize how paneling works, and then it makes it a lot easier once you get to Grasshopper and you're trying to create your own definition to panel. Um, we'll do one later today, but this will just make it so that you understand kind of what's happening. And sometimes it's actually the other way around. People use this and don't get it, but then they do it in Grasshopper and they're like, oh, it's easy because I'm telling it exactly how I want it to do. Here there's like a little bit of mystery where it just you just click a button, it just disappears, and then it just makes a bunch of stuff for you. Um, if I want to try a different shape now, let's make these guys. So now I've got two very different shapes. So let's try paneling from grid, 
custom 3D. First one is that one. Second one, that one. Enter. And then here's select objects, that one. Enter. Oops, I grabbed the wrong one. I got ahead of myself. First bounding grid, enter. Second bounding grid, enter. My object is that one this time. And then once that's been, oh, I didn't check to see if I was telling it. It doesn't show me that. That's that one. It's back over like. So this kind of looks like a armadillo or like a turtle or something. And then this one. So you could imagine that maybe in some areas I want these like portals or they're like light wells or something. In other areas I just want these kind of like just openings. And so there are ways you can combine them using paneling tools. And that's what that third option is. So in here if you go paneling from grid panel custom 3D variable. So with this one it's going to ask us like it did before for the first one. So let's say first bounding grid is that one. So enter. Second bounding grid, we're going to tell it this one. And so now it's giving me a series of options. So this is probably what I overlooked on the other one and didn't realize because I clicked too fast. The top. The first four are how it's going to start organizing the panel within the grid, so that offset and the base. So like if you wanted it to be like shifted so that it's like half a panel over from your grid, then you could do that. Let's say you actually made this grid and that's the full surface of your facade, but you need like structure to capture it, then you could tell it to come in a little bit. And so that way you still have the room for your frame. Um, so pattern method, this is how you decide how many panels you get and this is how you're going to tell paneling tools what to do so if you click that you can just it can like just average a bunch of stuff or we can do list so I want to tell it a list because I have the panel already and I'm going to tell that one by one this is panel one this is panel two and then distribution method this is how paneling tools will decide when to use the first panel and when to use the second panel so if you click that we can keep every single thing exactly the same and just change this and you'll get completely different results. So it, it has a huge impact on what you do. And the first one is just Gaussian curvature or mean curvature. Those will analyze how curved the surface is that you're doing. And then it will say like once you get past like X amount, it's going to switch to the next panel. Or it will go to like a higher panel. Let's say we had 10 panels. It might go from like no curvature to like totally vertical and use that as the extreme. And so depending where the amount of angle is on that surface, it will decide it's from like a one to a five or a five to a six, and then maybe it's a three, and so it'll put panel three. When you just have two panels, it's gonna be either one or two. So it could be when it's totally flat, it's one. When it starts curving, it becomes two. And then if it flattens out again, it's gonna use panel one. And so that's one way to do it. Um, I'm going to do this way, which is called point attractors. It's very similar to curve attractors, but we can actually tell it as you get closer to this point, you should be prioritizing one panel. And if it's far away from that point, don't use that panel. Use a different one. Um, the other one is curves. So then we could draw a line through the the surfaces that we're creating here and then as it gets closer to that it's going to shy away think of it like um, a magnet like repelling a certain type of panel so if you move it around then all of a sudden it's going to like move away from that 
Um, next one is vector, so we could define like a, a trajectory for it. Random, random will literally just pick randomly. So every panel, it'll just say like this one, the next time it might be the next one, and every time you run it, it'll create a different effect. So if you just wanted a random facade, that's how you would you could do it really easily. If you do bitmap, what that lets you do, it's pretty cool. You can grab like a picture and then you convert to a bitmap format so it's only true black or true white and then it uses that to start defining where to do these panels. So let's say you wanted, you had a nice, you need a lot of panels to make it look good. So if it's like a very small resolution and you have like a huge building, so the whole facade is like a big series of panels you could make it do this and then you could put like the logo of the company as like a bitmap image and as let, let's say like you did the rhino logo that you have down here so like where it's black it would be one type of panel and then maybe you have an open panel so that as it gets like closer to white areas it becomes the open panel and then when you look at it it'll actually look like your image um, and then draft angle I'm not really sure what the draft angle is but um, that has something to do that it will change it. So let's start with point attractors because this one is the easiest way to detect exactly what's happening. Um, I'm going to pick that and I'm going to leave it like that and it says enter. So the first question it wants now is the attractors. So wherever I click it's going to prioritize the one panel and then later I'm going to switch the order of the panels and you'll see it's just going to flip them. So let's pick that point and then maybe this point you can click like there and you can grab a bunch of them just grab here so let's say like you had a very like solid exterior and you had like you wanted to create openings along the different panels so you could have a panel that's solid and you could offset the edge of that panel and create like a cut in it so all of a sudden you have like a window inside your panel and then you could tell it wherever you had a window that you wanted to open you could click as an attractor and as the panels get closer to that it would become more open or less open right now we only have two panels so it's either going to be totally one or totally the other but I can show you in a minute we can create like an effect going from one to the next and then you can get it just kind of like like shrink down um, so let's try it with these maybe put one right there do I have one over here Let's grab that corner. I'm gonna hit enter. So now it wants module one objects. So I'm gonna click this guy. The next thing it will say is select an object to define the 3D bounding space. Notice how when it was tiling it here, it put the edge of the ring right to the edge of the panel, and then here it went right to the edge and then up and down it went to the full height everywhere always if you wanted to have a panel that's kind of like inset within that let's say you're running this twice one is going to create the frame and now you're trying to create the window inside using that same like grid you could use this step where it wants to know the 3d bounding space if you don't do that it will always see how this one is a lot smaller than that one you'll see once we panel them they're gonna end up being the same size because we're gonna just use the actual shape and tell paneling tools to just smash the shape into there if I was to create a box around this and tell grasshopper I mean um, paneling tools don't use the shape use that box as the actual boundary it will form the box to the shape and let's say this was floating inside a smaller shape it would shrink that proportionally down and it wouldn't actually touch the edges so you can help either leave it exactly like it is see it says press enter to use the module bounding box if I do that it's just gonna stretch your object to the maximum now it wants object 2 and I'm gonna press enter I mean it, click on it and then say enter there is no bounding box extra I just want to use the actual shape hit enter and then now look we only have two objects right but it, the list keeps going it'll go forever so to tell it to stop you can hit enter if done you need to be careful with that because if you don't do that and you actually click another object it will grab that 
and then it's wrong and then you got to like restart the whole process and I've had that happen to me on like the 10th panel where I accidentally clicked the wrong thing and I was like no and I had to redo the whole thing so I'm gonna hit enter because I'm done and see now it's creating everything it'll think about it and then if we go through here now and look it's put one of the panels wherever we clicked a little point attractor it chose it looks like it chose the circle and then everywhere it was farthest away from that it put the other ones so this is a totally different way I'm just gonna move this one in between these here to start defining like a shape so now that was using a point attractor. If I wanted to bring a curve in here, let's say as you get closer to that edge and this edge, I wanted to use one panel over the other one. We can repeat this paneling from grid, custom 3D variable, first bounding grid, there. Oh wait, I think I accepted the same settings. Oh no, I didn't. So that one, and now this one, and now to accept options, let's just change the method from point attractors to curve attractor. So now it's going to ask me for a curve. So select curves. I said that one and this one. Hit enter. Select object one, this one, and object two is that one. I don't have a third one, so I'm going to hit enter. And now it's created this. Notice how it's distributed closer to that and that. It's created the circles. And when you get farther away, it's going to use the other ones. So now let's do something. Let's grab this. Move that guy over. So you can see we have like totally different options. You could do all one, all open, some weird combination. And then we can also do multiples of these. So there's one that we could do. So let's grab this and then now let's make a copy of that and here I'm just gonna go to holes delete hole there oh, I didn't so let's just make Give me the center. So even though these are different sizes, it'll still work. If we repeat this now, we can even tell it randomize. So randomly give me open, randomly give me circles. So you go paneling, custom 3D variable, that guy, that guy, distribution method, random, this guy. And now it will give me So some that are randomly solid, some that are randomly open. So once you've created the initial sort of grid, it's easy to kind of keep trying different things. Um, when you want to get more complex, you can create like a whole bunch of these. Like you could create that. 
you could create one that it's got um, like more solid so let's make like this one that's like like this And then maybe we do one that's almost completely solid, but not quite. And then the full solid. So there's my three or four panels. Um, so for this one, let's do paneling. Let's create a curve. So I'll even show you curve attractor. So here I can go here, there, maybe there, there, and something like that. And this I can do points on. So something like that. So now as it gets closer to these, it will change from one of these to the other one. So maybe this one, I put it, pull it like way in there. So I'm going to go back, paneling tools from grid, 3D custom variable. Is 3D, I'm setting it and it's changing so it's variable. Um, first bounding grid is that one, second one is this one. Distribution method, I'm going to say curve attractor. So now it wants my curve, it's that guy. Object one. So here, whatever you do as the first one will be closest to the curve. So if I wanted it open along the curve, I would start with this guy. Enter. This we are really careful. Enter. Now it wants number two. This one. And then enter. You want to hit enter enough times, but not one too many, because that's like the worst. And then here you hit enter. Enter. And number four is that one. Enter. Enter. And this is what usually will happen on accident. You hit it a third time, and it just runs. Uh, so now we should get solid, and then along the path of that curve, wherever it was closest, it should kind of transition to being fully open. So notice it went through that opening there. And here's something that's cool. We can run the same exact thing and just move the curve. And now watch what we get. So this one, I'm going to move it this direction, 20. Maybe... And then we run that again. <coughs> so it's the same exact thing. Enter, enter, two. Three, four, and I hit enter a third time. And what we get now, the only difference this time was that we moved the curve up. So if we move this over now, you can see they're totally different. Even though the grid was the same, the panels were the same, the only difference was where we had that attractor. And so now we have kind of this opening there. And if you were to like take that attractor now and then rotate it 90 degrees so that it went up and down straight into the middle of the object, it would change it again. Um, so all these little tiny things that we can change, those are different parameters that we're changing. And so that's the basic like fundamental behind parametric geometry. So you set a series of rules and you change one parameter across the whole thing and you get you're controlling like multiple things all at once um, so 
what we can do now. That's the basics of paneling tools. If you wanted to start cutting a hole in it so that you have like an opening and there was no panel, you can do this using the grid utility. You can trim the grid. You can extend it so that you have like more panels. You can then like weave it. Um, there's a bunch of things you can start doing then it starts getting really complicated. Um, you can then use these to kind of like adjust the edges and stuff that you get out of it. And then these ones you can use to control other sorts of geometry that you're getting. Um, but for the most part, th those are the key big ones where look how much stuff we've made, all different kinds of options and things like that. If you wanted to create the structure for this, you could do that a lot of ways. You could create like a panel that's just the edges and then you can pipe those. You could create a series of panels that are like the X so that it, they start to carry across each other. Um, if I wanted to do that, I would probably just do a 2D one. So I can do just paneling 2D grid. Click here. Uh, base surface, we can use that. And then you could use that as the grid or I can change this to be like the angle box that could work depending how big your panels are so maybe box X or maybe the diamond looks like it would need to be tighter than that oh, that was tighter Let's just try this one. And then from here, I can hit enter, right? And then it gives me, oops, oh, whoops. I gotta repeat that. I had to set the surfaces. Let's tell it no faces, I want edges. And then once you've created those, you can pipe them diameter, radius, I don't know, they cap flat, fit, no, so let's try one, it's probably way too big, so then let's undo, repeat it, diameter, 0.2, so it's probably better, so now we can grab, ah, I think, oh. Give me a so now you've got some sort of structure underneath. So right now those don't really line up. So probably like like that panel right there just fall right off but you would adjust this so that you can get it to start lining up it's a lot easier to do once you know kind of the dimensions and stuff like that uh, especially if you're doing like a, a script on your own um, we can do a quick one we can take that surface let's create a copy 